Well, it's a very good morning to all of you, uh, or should I say, bon dia, am I right? Yeah, it's time to get into our first readings of the Portuguese text. So all aboard, boys and girls, on the fast-moving ghost caboose, welcome aboard, orange gobblers and yogurt pot botherers. It's time to get to grips with a very, very curious little excerpt from the uh, 1976 magazine Cronica Feminina. Cronica Feminina is a magazine aimed at women and um, I think was started before the Portuguese Revolution of 1974. And uh, just a quick outline of where women were coming from uh, and how we land into 1976. Uh, it's w worth mentioning the uh, quite ludicrous situation of, of uh, gender in uh, Portugal in the 20th century. Uh, so the Portuguese dictatorship lasted from 1926 to 1974. It's 48 years. It's longer than any other Western European dictatorship. Um, it's longer than Spain's and it lasted for such a long time for various interesting uh, reasons or the interesting explanations for, for why it lasted so long, which we probably won't get into. Um, but during this 48 year period, 1926 to 1974, uh, pretty much all women were denied the vote. Uh, women were not allowed driver's licenses or bank accounts either. That's almost all women. Uh, certain women were granted these if they had their husband's written permission. And if they came, if they were the, uh, I, I believe the uh, householder, so to speak, the woman, the person dominating the family. Also, I, th I believe they required a university degree in order to do the basic things like open up a business, uh, vote, and simply drive a car. Of course, there weren't many cars in Portugal at this time anyway, but the the principle is the same. Women were um, very much part of the family-based ideal of Portuguese society. Uh, women were supposed to feed the nation, give birth to the nation, and look after and nurture the nation. They were not supposed to engage in any kind of uh, wider societal, um, how do you say, uh, in involvements. Um, so Portugal had a long way to go uh, after the uh, after the well the military coup really of 1974, which was peaceful, but it was a military coup. It was it's seen as a popular revolution, which I, I think it mostly is, but it does sort of glance over the fact that this was a communist revolution. Uh, the the uh, the struggle of which uh, later became becomes a socialist movement. Uh, probably with American involvement. These things are still debated today. To what extent it was a military or a popular revolution is very much up in the air, uh, but this is my opinion on it. Um, and I think it's good to, to get to get a feel of where, where Portugal is in 1976 from when this uh, article comes from. So yeah, it's one of those classic kind of uh, makeup, um, uh, idolizing um, magazines. It's not without content. There are certain really good good uh, articles in this. Um, as horoscopes, um, I'm trying to find, and pretty worrying stuff as well, uh, right from the outset. Uh, breast enlargement um, uh, adverts. I'm so sorry, I'm really bad at doing this camera. There you go. Um, so yeah, you can tell this is already a bit of a uh, a tangled issue when when uh, the question of female emancipation is raised within a magazine which is sort of a uh, which has advertisements for breast enlargement and for slimming uh, tanning and uh, and sewing machines I mean there are lots of adverts for sewing machines here um, perhaps I should say as well um, I mean, and, and this sounds kind of silly, but I'm not against people sewing. That's absolutely fine. But this is right from the memory of women supposed to be staying at home. Um, the three ideals of, of Portugal at the time, as espoused by the dictator for most of the period, Salazar, Antonio de Oliveira Salazar. The three ideals, the triad of Portugal was uh, football, um, fado, fado, which is like a folk, a folk music meaning fate. 
sort of t- ties in with the dictatorship at that time. Football Fadl and uh, uh, Fatima. Fatima is a name, of course, of a woman. It's an Arabic name for a woman. It's also the name of a town in northern Portugal. Uh, excuse me, uh, north of Lisbon, not northern Portugal, uh, where a series of miracles uh, occurs in uh, the First World War, or perceived miracles. Uh, it's the lords of um, of Portugal, and it's a fascinating phenomenon in itself, uh, the whole thing that happens there. Um Football Fatima and Fadl um, and women, of course, tie that uh, all together, really, not necessarily the football, but the idea of keeping the keeping Portugal Catholic, keeping Portugal safe, keeping Portugal nurtured. So um, we've also got little, um, I think we call them mini novellas, so little um, <laughs> dramas. They're really good fun. <laughs> uh and uh, so I think we move on to the part I wanted to read, uh, and the usual um, uh, acknowledgements of my of mispronunciations. Uh, if if you're Portuguese and you're struggling to understand me, yeah, well, sorry, but uh, I, I, this is something I wanted to do. Uh, it's finally read some text in Portuguese. So what I'm going to do is read, uh, say like a paragraph in Portuguese, and then translate it. I, I couldn't work out if this would be really annoying to listen to. Um, I couldn't really decide. So I, I thought, why don't we just give it a go and see how it is. And if it's really annoying, I won't do it again. I'll just translate the whole thing. But I think it's nice to, it could be nice to even just hear Portuguese. Even if you don't understand Portuguese, it's quite nice to, uh, well, I, I'm completely in love with the language. But it maybe gives us a feel for the passage of the ideas. Okay, so the article is this one. And we, know, we see immediately that uh, on the on the right hand side the article is twinned on the left with uh, an advert for slimming, emagreza. Uh, so the article the article is called "Que pensa de emancipação da mulher?" What do you think about the about emancipation of women? So it's a series of street interviews. So here we go. The article is by Carvalho Ramos, and the photos are by Vel Gomes. And we'll start with the with the star, interestingly. It's an unusual approach. But we'll start with the author's or the writer's introduction, which goes as follows. Encheram as ruas e cravos vermelhos. They filled the streets with, uh, with red carnations. Carnations were the sign, the symbol of the Portuguese Revolution, which was perceived to be peaceful. And it mostly was. It mostly was. Um, foram as reuniões do sindicato, pediram melhorias de salários e reivindicaram creches para os filhos. Um, they went to meetings of the syndicate, or they went to syndicate meetings. They asked for better salaries or raising in salaries and um, claims for creches, for uh, kindergartens, uh, for their children. I'm going to read read all of it and then come back to it. I think that's probably a better way. So I'll read the, the rest of the paragraph. São mulheres. They are women. They are women. Mulheres que trabalham em fábricas, nos escritórios, nas lojas ou simplesmente em lojas, em suas próprias casas. Mulheres. Pessoas com direitos e deveres. Mas e a tal emancipação? Quando? Hoje? Amanhã? Nunca? Um, so they asked for all of these things. They they championed the the revolution. They are women, women who work in factories, in offices, in shops, or simply in their own homes. Women, women or people with rights and duties. But what about this emancipation? What about this emancipation they've got now? When? Today? Tomorrow? Never? Crónica Feminina registrou algumas opiniões nas ruas da Baixa Lisboeta. Que pensa da emancipação da mulher? A esta pergunta, várias réplicas quase unânimes. A emancipação é difícil, dada a falta de mentalização e quase toda a gente, homens e mulheres. Mas passamos às as, as respostas. Ok, so, the chronicle, the feminine chronicle, or crónica feminina, um, took various uh, opinions from the streets of Baixa. Uh, what did you what do you think about uh, female emancipation? What's your take on female emancipation? So this question 
various replies were were pretty much unanimous. A lot of replies were unanimous. Uh, emancipation is difficult, given that there's a, a complete lack of mentality in in ordinary people. That there's not enough mentality for this in the ordinary people. Uh, between men and women, and this is an inter interesting thing, uh, really interesting thing about these interviews is that uh, a lot of the women's claim that it's also on behalf of women. Women need to be prepared for emancipation, not just men. So let's go to the replies. Let's go to the responses. So we'll start with Arlette Marisa. Arlette Marisa. Penso, so this is the first woman, penso que a mulher se deve emancipar, emancipar porque não pode continuar toda a vida a ser escrava do homem como até agora. Embora ainda seja bastante nova, creio que os homens que fazem exigências que não têm qualquer razão de ser. Ainda recentemente na aula de português se discutiu esse assunto com base em determinada, determinada lição. Lá vinha a velha história do bifinho e do ovo estrelado para o marido com sacrifício da mulher e dos filhos. Ora, isso não pod podia continuar. Felizmente, nos casais modernos, as coisas já, são, já se vão modificando. E ainda bem. I'll do my best here. So, I think... Uh, uh, Sorry, penso que a mulher se deve emancipar porque não pode continuar. I think women, the, the woman needs to be emancipated because we cannot continue with the life of being a slave, a slave of a man as it has been, been until now. However, given that this is such a new situation, I think, I'm, yeah, reading that right, I believe that w men... Um, are, are, dem are making demands that they haven't got any reason to demand. Uh, and recently, in um, Portuguese classes, so she's saying she's quite young, uh, in Portuguese classes, uh, we've discussed this uh, subject, we've argued about this uh, sub uh, subject, uh, with the idea of emancipated teaching, liberated teaching. But from here, we discuss the old story of the bifinho e o, o, e o ovo estrelado. So that means uh, the story of the, the pork chop and the fried egg. Uh, I actually had to ask my Portuguese friend what this meant. The story of the pork chop, bifinho and the ovo estrelado and he said ah well it's it's about in very poor and very very traditional families the man at the dinner table would get the steak or would get the meat would get the protein would get the important stuff and the kids and the, the wife would get everything around it the potatoes the cheaper stuff the less nutritious stuff how about that o bifinho e o ovo Estrelado. Uh, so indicating that the women had to sacrifice the and as well as the kids for the men. Ora isto, ora isto não podia continuar. This cannot keep going. This cannot continue. Luckily or happily, in modern couples, uh, things are already beginning to change. They're already modifying or moving on, and good for them. E ainda bem. Second interview with Teresa Monteiro. Estou, man, excuse me, estou absolutamente de acordo, de acordo com a emancipação da mulher. Se estamos a evoluir, evoluir e a mulher prova em quase todos os campos e atividades, está ao nível do homem, porque tantas, porque tant, tantas distinções. Só pela igualdade em todos os aspectos e creio que isto, isso será uma realidade. Do, no futuro. É preciso, no entanto, que as mulheres tenham muita força e vontade e que os homens ajudem. So, sem isso, nada feito. Uh, I'm absolutely in agreement with uh, female emancipation. If we're going to continue to evolve and the women is going to prove themselves in all fields and activities, 
in the on the level of men how how why are we raising so many distinctions i believe in equality and all aspects in in all of its aspects and i believe this is a possibility to be realized in the future that this can happen it's necessary however that women have a lot of uh, power and will and that the and that men help that men are part of this without this nothing will be de- done sei su nada feito Augusta Ferreira, vou me curar Augusta Ferreira, é uma especial de mulher envolve problemas muito complicados, muito complicados. Claro que sou a favor dela, mas reconheço que ainda estamos muito longe dos objetivos a alcançar. O fato de haver muitos, muitos mulheres empregadas é um engano. Isso reflete necessidade, não significa emancipação. Para mim, todos Todas as dificuldades são reflexo da falta de mentalização, tanto da mulher como do homem. Há mulheres que não sabem usar a liberdade, assim como há homens que não sabem concedê-la. Female emancipation involves problems that are really complicated. Of course, I'm in favor of it, but I recognize that we're really far from our objectives and really far from hitting the objective or achieving it. The case or the fact of having women employed is a mistake. This reflects this reflects a necessity but now but doesn't reflect emancipation. For me, all the difficulties that we face are a reflex or a reflex of the lack of mentality, the lack of almost there is a fault of the mentalization this constantly comes up in these interviews, this lack of preparedness and mentality for this uh, for this objective to be reached. As much as the women and the men as well. There are women who do not know how to use their liberty. <laughs> there are women who don't know how to use their freedom. And like this, men who don't know how to give it or to concede it. That's very ambiguous, right? It it could be, I mean, to me, this sounds arch conservative, like re- redoubled conservative. Um, maybe it's not worth going for this thing because it's not going to be achieved and we're never going to get there. And women won't know how to deal with the freedom and men won't want to do it. Uh, or it could be much more enlightened than I'm, I'm, I'm putting across. Cristina Caeiro. Não estou de acordo com a emancipação da mulher, pelo menos de forma como certas mulheres a compreendem e interpretam. That's a really hard word for me. Interpretam. Interpretam. Interpret. Uh. Uh, então, com certos movimentos, nem pouco mais nem menos, há por aí muita confusão a esse respeito. Com certo oportunismo, a mistura. Não, sinceramente, não posso concordar. I am not in agreement. I do not agree with emancipation of women. At least in the way that certain women com- uh, comprehend it and interpret it. So, with these certain movements, these 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 uh, these movements we're talking about, those movements... Um, I'm I'm not really against all four. There is from there a lot of chaos, a lot of confusion uh, in in the respect of female emancipation, with a certain opportunis- opportunism as well. No, honestly, I'm not. I cannot agree with it. With it, Lord Oliveira. Concordo inteiramente com a emancipação, embora reconheça que ainda estamos muito longe de a conseguirmos. De a conseguirmos. O nosso povo é muito atrasado e as pessoas não estão mentalizadas para uma viragem mais ou menos brusca. E repara que não me refiro apenas aos homens. Se alguns deles, deles muitos, claro, não estão, mental, não estão mentalizados para dar liberdade às mulheres, estes, muitos também... 
não estão preparadas para assumirem as responsabilidades dessas liberdades. Pessoalmente, gostava de ser livre e não depender de ninguém, mas conheço que não está ao meu alcance em endireitar o mundo. So it's terribly read. Não está, não está ao meu alcance em direitar o mundo. This is fascinating. Lord Oliveira says, I completely agree with emancipation, but I recognize that there we're still very far from this possibility to be achieved, conseguirmos from us a, a, a being able to achieve this in the future. Our, and this this is really great sentence. O nosso povo é muito atrasado e as pessoas não estão mentalizadas para uma, para uma viragem mais ou menos brusca. Our people is very uh, um, our people are very behind, atrasados, retarded in a way, or behind. It's a really fascinating word, atrasado. And people are not don't have the mentality for a turning that is so brusca, so brusque, or so direct or uh, um, violent. She uses the word atrasado backwards. This is a really interesting word. Um, the dictator, who's kind of often mostly responsible for so, or pretty, has a lot of uh, uh, blame for all of this. The dictator who died in 1970, uh, his name is Antonio de Oliveira Salazar. He was born in 1888. He um, was very devout Catholic and he used the word atrasado in a fascinating uh, letter. This letter was addressed to the Coca Cola company. Coca-Cola wanted to build factories in Portugal. He didn't want them to come. He wasn't a communist. He wasn't a capitalist, really. He wanted to seal Portugal off from uh, any influence from abroad. What did he do? He, he uh, responded to the, uh, uh, not invitations, but the the requests of the Coca-Cola comp Cola company to build factories in, the, in, the, uh, in Portugal. He said, we don't want your vulgar trucks booming down our uh, medieval um, uh, streets, uh, down our uh, paving slabs or cobblestones. I regard your word modern as vulgar and the word backwards as an ideal. So he used, it, Salazar himself believed backwardsness was actually a virtue. My people, he said, need to learn the virtue of being poor. So, I noticed that I refer, I'm not referring only to men, going back to Lord Oliveira. So, Algonsdale is more clear. So, so some of, if some of the men aren't with the, with the mentality to help liberate women, women are also not prepared for this. And why are they, why are they not prepared? Well, 48 years of dictatorship, 48 years. Um, Women are not prepared to assume the roles and the responsibilities that is demanded on them. Clearly, many of the respondees to this interview, to these questions, felt, yeah, well, we'd love this thing, but we're not ready. So how can they get ready? How could they get ready? What did that mean at the time? Personally, I would love to be free and not depend on anyone, but I, uh, but I understand or I know this is beyond my my potential. This is beyond my reach. It's not for me to decide such things. There's a certain meekness to uh, these respondents. Uh, well, who is it for me? Why is it for me to decide? I don't think we can go anywhere. So there seems to be a real paralysis in the this kind of political imagination. Maria, I'll just show you these uh, these pictures as well. I think it's really good to just can you see that? Um, see who these women are. I mean, the photographs are really poor quality, but they're quite stark. The quality is of almost kind of nakedness to the photographs. They're not flattering photographs. They're right there on the street. Nothing to make it look more special. Frontal. Frontal is a very Portuguese word. 
literally frontal, but it means very straightforward and direct. Frontal also has a feeling of honesty. So frontal, I'm I'm honest or I'm I'm direct. Maria Luisa. Penso que a mensa, a mensa especial da mulher constitui um direito teológico como natural, embora as coisas estejam muito difíceis. Devo até dizer que já vi todo, tudo muito melhor. Já vi tudo muito melhor. Houve um certo recuo. Os homens não colaboraram. As, estru as estruturas não ajudam. Enfim. Eu já lutei um bocadinho, mas começo a desacreditar. O nosso povo não está preparado para isso. E se os homens não colaboraram, colaboram. Como já disse, as mulheres também não lutam muito por isso. Maria Luisa says, I think that uh, emancipation of women constitutes a very logical uh, right that's just natural. But... Things are really difficult. I can, I could, I have to even say, or I should even say, uh, I've seen much better. I've seen something much better. I'm a bit aware I might be mistranslating this one here. Uh, you can point out any any errors or any mistakes in the comments if you wish to contribute. Um, there is a certain uh, recul. I completely forget this word. I looked it up last night. Recul. Maybe it'll come back to me. Um, there's, I think, maybe a certain issue or stumbling block, something, something like that. Uh, men do not collaborate, and the structures don't help. Enfim, enfim, it's like kind of resigned sigh. People say enfim, it's like what you say towards the end of a conversation. So after all, um, kind of like after all. Um, at the end of the day, I've already fought a little bit. Eu já lutei um bocadinho, but I've started to to stop. I've started to stop believing. It's a bad translation. Eu começo de desacreditar. Desacreditar means literally to unbelieve or disbelieve. I started to disbelieve. Our people are not prepared for this. I love I love it the fact that so many respondents have said our people. It's not the Portuguese people. O nosso povo não está preparado para isso. We're not prepared for this. And men are not collaborating, just like I said. And women are not fighting for this. So the last one, you'll be pleased and relieved to hear, is from Elena Diogo. I consider emancipation. Oh, excuse me, I have to translate it first. After speaking in Portuguese first, considero, considero, considero. Uh, I don't know how to say that word. Emancipação da mulher um mal necessário, mas penso que ainda falta tudo para conseguirmos. As pessoas não estão preparadas. Um atraso de quase 50 anos trouxe reflexos difíceis de apagar. E será muito demorada a mentalização necess necessária para a metamorfose que se deixe que se deseja. Ao dizer isso, não pretendo afirmar que serão os homens os únicos culpados. As mulheres, as maiores interessadas, afinal, tam talvez também não estejam suficientemente preparadas para assumirem as responsabilidades da emancipação que pretendam. More of the same, really. Uh, I consider female emancipation a necessary evil. Uh, this may be a bit more exaggerated, but I believe that we've still got a lot to do to achieve this. We're not, as pessoas, they or people are not prepared. This is a delay of almost 50 years. And this delay is really difficult to scrub away or to wipe out, to apagar. And it will be really difficult and it will be really delayed, all of this. The mentality will be delayed as well. But for a metamorphosis, a, a metamorph metamorphosis that we desire. Saying this, I do not intend to affirm that 
it's men who are the only ones guilty. Women are the ones who are most interested in this after all. But possibly they are not prepared to assume the responsibilities of emancipation that they intend. I hear so much stasis, so much fear of progression, even in those who want it here. Um, Portuguese people are often maybe misread as being shy. Um, I think they do have a great deal of confidence. It's just located in a really peculiar place, which is the colonial journeys of 1498, uh, the victory of, of hitting the landmass of southern uh, or the Indian subcontinent in this moment. And there is a certain very, very unacknowledged arrogance, I believe, to many uh, attitudes I hear in Portugal. They are quietly proud of what happened and what they did, despite the violence. Um, and so what that manifests as is a kind of humility and a meekness in the present, knowing full well that the Portuguese had been so colonially successful all those years ago. What's the point in moving and fighting for emancipation if all you see around you is stasis, uh, if you know by world standards that you have some of the lowest rates of literacy, the population is widely malnourished, that the artist Paula Rego in, in the 1980s, upon returning to Portugal, saw people in the northern villages with no shoes. Portugal knew very, very well and is acutely aware even today of its place in the global community, not just in terms of being perceived to be backwards, but also to have lost so much. People in Hungary understand what this is. People in Britain understand whether it's avowed or not, what it means to be a post-colonial nation. People in Portugal very much understand that Portugal was leading the way, was champions of the world, was spreading Christianity and taking gold and spices and slaves from all over the world and was had one of the richest capitals in the 1500s and they of course lost it all. And why did they lose it all? Why did they find themselves now in this situation of uh, enforced uh, passivity? That's maybe for another time. But constantly in these interviews is this fear of desire uh, itself, fear of something they actually want. Most of the respondents want to be emancipated. They desire it, but they're fearful of engaging in what it would require of them to get to that stage. I'm going to add a huge, huge aviso, like warning, of course, this is just one interpretation. I'm not making this PC like everyone's welcome to their own interpretation. But I realise the whole, I mean, the whole point of these videos is to start a discussion, to start the conversation and to work things out in real time. You could say, why didn't I plan a little bit more? That would be valid. But that's not the point. It's important for me to get these things out in order to start the conversation, to start the momentum, because what I see nowadays is such a lack of political commitment on behalf of many people of my generation, this lack of any this total stasis in a post social media ironic age but it's not just social media that keeps us static it's i guess the history of portugal as well and what's what's happened in this country let me remind you for 48 years in portugal most pretty much all women were not allowed to vote were not allowed driver's licenses and were not allowed to open up businesses so they were forced to be in, in at home, uh, divorced from public office, not allowed divorce as well. The Catholic Church up until 1974 used to physically examine women who wanted to get married. That certainly happened here in Lisbon, in the Cathedral, the Say, if you wanted to get married there, women would have to be physically examined to, to verify their virginity. This was in the 70s. There is a huge parallel as well to the treatment of homosexuals in many cases of men uh, being physically examined for engagement in anal sex. 
The film Alberto is a really good document of this as a film from about three, four years ago, uh, which explains the life of the poet Alberto and all of this kind of enforced um, heterosexual, heterosexuality. Um, and towards the end of this talk, uh, I think it's worth just reading the two adverts, among others, that surround uh, these interviews. So once again, this is the beginning of the interviews. And what do you see to the uh, the left-hand side? Emagresa. Um, magro means skinny or magra. Emagresa, in, in English you could say emaciated, meaning starving. And this, of course, in contemporary Portuguese means slimming, emagresa. So there's a slimming advert to the left of this interview, which shows you, at least in the institutional framework, Portugal had a long way to go and had very traditional ideas of, uh, of women. It's okay to want to be slim, okay? I'm not saying it's bad to be slim. I'm saying it's bad that this is enforced in a kind of commercial way, right on the opposite page of something which is supposed to be about female emancipation. So it's all about looking, of course, as a woman, uh, better in the male gaze. It's the men's idea of what women should look like that dictates this magazine. So lose weight up to eight kilos in 30 days with the um, the... Yota Kappa technique, the revolutionary solution to remove, to get rid of your fat in any part of your body without the need to engage in gymnastics. Then we have below the, the very interviews I've just read. There we have, and again, I don't have a problem with people who like sewing, that's fine, but again, it's who's wanting that. Is it the men enforcing this implicitly, subtly? So we've got on the left-hand side, bottom left, a, an advertisement for uh, a sewing machine and sewing tools. And then on the bottom right, we've got uh, an advert for hair products. Then on the next page, just after the, the interviews, we've got yet another uh, advert. So on the left-hand side, I've got an advert in this case, more sewing tools, tricotar, tricotar sewing machines and so on. And on the right hand side, we've got another slimming advert, Immigresa. Um, and this time it's a special tea. Now this is almost certainly quackery, uh, pseudoscience bullshit that was marketed and sold to women to slim without the need to exert, the without the need for effort without violent exercises, without sacrifices and rigorous diets, without the, the risk and danger of chemical products, without weakening your organism, sha magri, the magri tea. So this is the first of my readings in Portuguese. I think I should prepare more, <laughs> so it'll be a little bit less broken up, uh, but I, uh, uh, I would like to continue reading bits in Portuguese and then translating to English. But if not only, it's just such a beautiful language in my opinion, so interesting and unusual. The second, it also gives you hopefully a feel for the flow of the speech and it's a good way of sort of uh, highlighting, I guess, things that were local to Portugal in such a particular time. So goodbye to Con Coronica Feminina. Thank you everyone for embarking on the fast moving ghost caboose. Yes, there she is. And I'll see you at 4pm. We're going to talk about Simon Reynolds and Pirate Radio.